people in the movement don't have much money. And so we, we can't just write off a check and, and ask for a film. Usually what happens is someone will uh, bring back a copy of the film into the country, uh, or one will be sent in by mail, and then many copies are made from that. And those copies are distributed widely, because our primary aim is to have these films be seen. And uh, so whatever monies we have goes into making additional copies. The North Vietnamese film industry is fairly young. Uh, they have, of course, much better resources than the National Liberation Front has. Uh, their later films have been getting fairly good. Uh, they have been also, like the NLF, overwhelmed with the problem of uh, building a nation under very difficult conditions. And so that their films initially were very stark. Now they have dramatic films. So for instance, uh, uh, we're showing a film that uh, is the story of a brother and sister uh, on opposite sides of the struggle. And this is a dramatic, acted-out film. And uh, in fact, in many parts, it was fairly subtle. Mrs. Van, here's a cake for Mr. Chin. This is the sister. Ah, it was you who murdered my son. Have you come to kill me, too? When I'm free, I'll make you pay for everything. Don't you realize that this is from Uncle Chin? Manifesto of the South Vietnam National Liberation Front. Stop! That's the brother a loyal South Vietnamese army officer. Good morning, Lieutenant. I'd like to talk to the soldiers. The brother begins to suspect his sister has joined the Viet Cong. Brothers, all we want to know is, who ordered you to fire at the field workers? Join us. Demand that your leaders put a stop to such crimes. Aren't you all peasants by birth? You know that our soil needs water, not the blood of your families. Brothers, don't you see how many innocent people are being killed? Sir, that witch is demoralizing our men. Uh, a year ago, she'd have been shot for this, but now the army desperately needs the sympathy of the people. They buried my husband alive in the very earth that he had farmed. And I was jailed for three years, with no proof of guilt. Was it a crime to tell my people how to improve their crops? How to learn and work together? Yes, that's why they arrested me. They also jailed my little son. He was only three. But they also considered him a communist so he was poisoned. People of Phuc Mai, now your trial begins, but there's still time to escape such suffering. Tell me frankly, Captain, what would you do if somebody in your family turned communist? That's the brother's American military advisor. I treat him like like any other communist, mother, father, brother, no matter who, shoot to kill. The brother turns to drink, and the sister is captured by the South Vietnamese. Talk. 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 plot thickens. The American advisor and the South Vietnamese try to force the sister to reveal the names of Viet Cong sympathizers. Now, now will you speak?
But the sister doesn't talk, despite all the tortures dreamed up by the American villain and the North Vietnamese film writer. When the brother learns what they have done to his sister, he seeks his revenge. take over the hamlet, and the brother and sister live on in the service of the Viet Cong. There are about 100 revolutionary films like this one being shown today in the United States, most of them distributed by Walter Teague. It's not necessary that you agree as the viewer with everything that you see. What is necessary, I think, is that you try, honestly, the viewer tries to understand what is the message that these people have when they made the film. You know, they didn't make it for commercial reasons. They made it because something emotional, something in their lives, they want to communicate. Are you bothered by authorities in this country, either um, federal or state or local? Well, we, we were bothered not in the area of films so much as in the area of literature. We also distribute, besides Vietnamese films, Vietnamese literature. And the idea being, let, let the American public hear what the Vietnamese side of the story is and then judge for themselves. And universities uh, are especially interested in this kind of material uh, for their libraries, for their students, for nations, and so on. And at one point, the government had seized about 15,000, as far as we can tell, copies of Vietnamese literature. Um, they're still holding on to them, and we're trying to free them. Meanwhile, there's plenty of literature available in the country for people who want it, and there's, there's no real problem. What effect do you think all the literature you have in the next room has on the people who read it? What effect, for example, will the films that you're going to have shown at Yale Law School have on those people at Yale. Well, let, it let won't make them revolutionaries, will it? Well, it'll help. We have shown these films around the country, and as I say, and in many circumstances. And uh, the effect, I think, is to give people at least some understanding of how the Vietnamese see their problem. We were always brought up to believe that revolutions were created by men sitting around a room, cranking out an underground press. And here it's out in the open. Is this the new lifestyle of the revolutionary movement in this world, is what I'm really asking? Well, it is to the extent that it can exist. That is, people in the movement, in making the, American Revolu the new American revolution, you might say, we are interested in making a better life, a better society, a better world, okay. Now, we are permitted right now to do certain things uh, in the open, to criticize the society, to try and change it in many ways. When the time comes that the society withdraws those uh, rights and it begins to oppress the people, as it has done to the black people to some extent, then we have no choice but to begin to go underground, if that's what we are forced to do. 